What's up, everyone? We're doing a podcast out in nature because it's a beautiful day. I'm joined by my friend Adam. Thank you for joining me. Um, let's talk first of all. What do you do? That's that's what got me interested. <laughs> I wanted to do this. So um, I work as an ambulance technician. Um, I do a lot of things. I do front line. I do film work, uh, TV shows, events. Um, encompasses everything really. Uh, it's kind of like a paramedic, but we can't give certain drugs. We can't cannulate. There's What's a lot cannulate? Of, Cannulates when you put a needle into the vein, you okay. can give give different drugs. Okay. Um, yeah, I've, I've been doing it for about six years now. Uh, started off as right at the bottom doing um, make ready, so when you you kit the ambulance up and you can uh, get to know all the equipment. And I was um, cleaning ambulances in the cold weather and yeah. in the winter, and you know doing all kinds of crazy stuff when I was a teenager. Um, but then I rose through the ranks uh, to technician level. Um, and hopefully next year I'll be doing a paramedic course. Nice. So why why this line of work? Um, it's always been in me, really. My dad was, he still is a paramedic for 30 years. He worked on the helicopter. He did HEMS. Um, and he used to, he was my hero growing up. He used to take me to school in his RRV, which is rapid response vehicle. Mm. Um, and my mum and dad met in the ambulance service. Uh, my granddad was a doctor, my grandma was um, a nurse, and my other granddad was a psychologist. So it's always been in me, really. Mm. Um, and I've, I've just kind of followed that path. That's so cool, man. And that's, you know, if people say um, if it's in your family, like you're more inclined to do it. Yeah. Do you feel like a sense of expectation, or were your parents just like, you do whatever you want? I think there was a level of expectation there, but ultimately was my decision. I could have gone down loads of different routes. Um, they put me into do- different situations to see what I want. I was very interested in video editing. I, mm. did a, um, I did some work experience at the White House Post, which is in London, and they, they it video edit some uh, major films, but I didn't like it at all. I didn't really want to go down that route. <laughs> Why didn't you like it? That sounds really cool. Well, so I went there and it was like the expectation versus reality. When you've got a big film, um, you can't really have that creative freedom and that creative mm. outlet. A lot of it is long hours. A lot of it is repetitive. It's tedious you know, as tedious. fuck. Yeah. Oh and my god. With the ambulance service, you've, your office is in a vehicle. You can go around anywhere. You know, mm. there's no, there's no confines to your job. You know, it's different every single day. Mm. You've got, there's no routine to it. You know. Yeah, definitely, man. I think that's what. So uh, when we spoke the first time, you were mm. saying you're on an entrepreneurial journey as well. And that's one of the big things that draws me to that. Like a lot of us have done the desk job. We've done like you have to sit in this building and these are your hours and it looks bad if you take an hour for lunch and that kind of shit. That to me is like, oh God. And, and the like, you know, you can't be sick on certain times and mm. shit like that. For me, those are like the big reasons, well, partly the big reasons why I feel like I need to do something entrepreneurial. What about you? Like what pushes you forward in that? Yeah, I, the autonomy side of things and, you know, I'm self-employed, so I get to pick and choose what, what days I work. Mm. Um, but yeah, I th- I've done, you know, retail jobs beforehand and it was stifling. There was no real creative outlet with with patient contact. You know, there are certain certain protocols you have to follow and you know you're dealing with traumatic situations every day but you can put your own personality in there you can Mm. be yourself and you can talk you know you've got to be able to talk to a variety of different people you know from age 80 down to eight years old Mm. and you've got to make them feel at ease and it's a skill Mm. and it's not it it can be learned but ultimately it's down to who you are as a person some people aren't cut out for it some people are Mm. and I feel like it was my destiny, really, to how, become that. How do you, like, the the way that I see it is, like, when you know that something's right for you, you you know it, yeah. right? What does that feel like for you? Like, for anyone else who's watching or listening, who's like, I like this thing, but how do I know that it's the right thing? Um, I, think, I think it's not really a sure, sure thing all the time. Sometimes it can fluctuate. Mm. There was many times that I was on that journey, I was in the apprenticeship mode and I was, you know, a trainee and, you know, I felt like I don't know anything. You know, mm. some of the jobs I went to, I saw these paramedics that were going there and they were gods, you know, they were they had able to do all these different things and I thought to myself, I'm not worthy of this journey. But over time, if you keep showing up, if you keep grafting, you put hard work into it, 
you start to develop your own sense of self, your own sense of accomplishment and all your different skills and they start developing. And then you start distancing yourself from the people that, you know, your masters essentially, and you become your own. And yeah, I feel, I feel that was a really good journey and yeah. Bro, do you yeah. know that distancing yourself from your masters and becoming your own? Shit, man. That's very, like, that's very profound in itself. And it's difficult also to do that. Because mm. I still look up to certain Stoics, for example, like Seneca, Marcus Aurelius, and all these other people. And I'm like, fuck, man. They, how, they were dealing with this, this, and this. And I've, I've got, like, a, a, a millionth of the, of the problem that they had. And I can't even seem to get through that. And... It's a it's a good and toxic thing to compare yourself to those yeah. masters. Like, how do you find the balance? So, yeah, you've touched on a very important thing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm reading a good book, Jordan Peterson, 12 Rules mm -hmm. for Life at the moment. He says, compare yourself to who you are yesterday, not to who others are today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's very important because, you know, comparing yourself, we do that as humans, naturally. We always do. Mm. But it's essential. You have to... You have to compare yourself to masters. You have to see what you want to take from that, but you also want to see what you don't want to take from that. Mm -hmm. And then you develop your own kind of authenticity. But comparing yourself is a, is a big thing. And, you know, sometimes, especially in, in my job and a lot of other high-powered kind of adrenaline-fueled jobs, you can do four, you know, night shifts that you 13, 14 hours, and you come home and then you've got your friends and family and, and you know, they complain about, you know, the coffee not being made right, or, <laughs> you know, and some of the stuff and, and the real, you know, the real, real life that has happened over the four, four night shifts, you know, mm. you've seen everything. You've mm. seen, you could go, have gone to Kali Caress, you could have gone to just a, a little old lady who needs, you know, some speaking to, mm. um, and trying to equate that to someone else's problems in daily life. You can't really do that because everything is relative to their own experience. Yeah. So, it, and I found myself doing that at the beginning of my journey. I found myself, you know, compare, you know, comparing their st story to my story, and I was getting quite angry. I was like, well, how can they complain about this? How can they complain about that? I've just done this, but mm. that's not a good way to be. Yeah. That's not a good place to be, because everyone is relative. Everyone's, we're all on our journey. We're all on a human experience, you know. Yeah, I, I've definitely, you know, I'm laughing because I've done the, you know, when I stopped doing a lot of other shit that I knew was wrong for me. Man, I started looking at other people like, oh my God, you're still doing that. You're yeah, like yeah, 60 yeah. years old. And people were like, oh, well, this is all I know. This is how I've been mm. living my life. Like, who are you to tell me any different? Uh, like, you know, this is good enough for them. It must be good enough for you. Yeah. And, you know, someone, I remember when I started the entrepreneurial thing, someone said to me like, you don't talk to us anymore. I said, well, yeah, it's intentional. Like, I've got shit to do. I, I can't keep doing the same stuff. And they said, yeah, but we've all got the same 24 hours in the day. So why aren't you making time for it? And it's, I think when you said it's all relative, it's like you can prioritize your life because you've seen all of these like near death stuff and you've seen, okay, yeah, I have my own life as well. I think other people, if they, it doesn't have to be their own struggle. It doesn't have to be like watching someone else, but there, there's no barometer for like, what's no. important and what's trivial For and, sure. and a lot of trivial shit gets put in important and a lot of sure. important stuff gets important <clears throat> for me is like how do you feel when you wake up every day and a lot of people at the time were like yeah we don't want to think about that we just need to get money and it's like yeah but then you're pushing everything to a side yeah how how do you think uh i don't even know how to phrase it but like what what do you think causes that making things trivial that are actually important like losing perspective it's all to do with your reality, really, isn't it? It's all to do with what's in your immediate reality, who you're dealing with on a, on a constant basis, what kind of road are you going? Are you going down the negative path of gossip and, you know, <laughs> thinking about other people's lives all the time and, you know, junk food and addiction and cigarettes and alcohol and drugs and all these different things that are there to serve instant gratification and all those needs? Or are you going down mastery if you're going down to the, path, you know, the higher path, are you going towards greatness? Mm. And if it's in your immediate reality that you're going through all these things, you know, the negative things, that's all you can see. That's all you can see in other people. That's all you can see in, in life. You get a victim mentality and, you know, it ends up killing people, man. Yeah. You know, addiction is a massive thing. I see it day in, day out. I see not just, you know, heroin addicts, which are, you know, really horrible to see. They can be from poor families, but they can be from really rich families mm. as well. 
and you've got heroin addicts, you've got food addicts, you've got, you know, addiction is such a wide thing. Mm. Um, and I think it's probably one of the biggest problems we have in our society today. And this, this is funny though, because like, I think addiction comes from, I'm hesitant to say wealth, but like it comes from a certain level of like comfort. So you've had basic needs taken care of. And I always think about like, I'm from the Punjabi community, right? Mm. In Punjab, there's a people who own land and they have money in the family, but their children, like they don't have shit to do. There's, they're not going out, they're not like, they have social circles, but when they meet up, they're just doing drugs. Yeah. And as someone who's come from addiction and stuff in the past, I think it's born from a level of uh, discomfort and comfort. Your, dis- your discomfort comes from like, I don't like my life, so I'm seeking that escape. The comfort is like, I don't want to do anything different because drugs is easy and it's fun. Yeah, yeah. And you can distract yourself all the time. Yeah, what, so what is your personal experience with addiction? Have you had stuff that you've been addicted to in the past? Oh, for sure. Um, I use a nicotine vape. Mm-hmm. I only started smoking when I was in the ambulance service. Um, I've been, you know, I'm, I'm kind of going into that that way of going full throttle on things. So, you know, in, in the past, I'd go out drinking and then um, it wouldn't just be a few drinks. It would be, you know, one leads to the other. And you end up feeling terrible in the yeah. morning. Um, I think it all, I know what you're saying when it comes down to, you know, a comfort level and trying to seek more, but also it comes from that, it comes from trauma as well and, mm. and everyone has trauma stored in their brain and the amygdala and it's it, it comes from that need to kind of nurse yourself and medicate yourself and I think in the ambulance service especially the amount of trauma that you see the amount of not just the visceral nature of you know major trauma or RTCs or you know that kind of stuff what's That's, RTC? Uh, road traffic collisions okay yeah so those are very real mm. um, but also the trauma of you know a little old lady who's you know, husband's just died and, you know, she's in a terrible state and she's not looking after herself and you go in there and you're like, this is horrendous. You know, mm. you, there's different levels of trauma and it all gets stored up in the brain. So there's a lot of people in the, in the medical community that, you know, self-medicate, whether that be through alcohol, cigarettes or, you know, food is a massive yeah, one. Massive, you know, yeah. your night shifts are terrible for people, you know, doing, doing that night work and having your, your circadian rhythm just all out of check. <laughs> and... You know, you're just binging on whatever because when you're tired, you know, you crave salt, you crave sugar. Yeah. And you're eating at all these wacky times and you just, you see it all the time. But What's, yeah. what's the worst night binge you've ever done? Oh, night binge. Like on food. <laughs> food like, do you know, did you ever go to KFC, kick the door and be like, <laughs> bitch, give me 700 chicken nuggets now. <laughs> that is a massive reality, man. That is. Like you joke about it, but a lot of our standby points are on parking lots mm. you know they could be 24 hours what's open 24 yeah, hours true. you know it's tesco or mcdonald's and mm. we in a 12 hour period you know we've got we've got 30 minute break <laughs> to try and get whatever we want so we're on these with these parking lots and we've got double cheeseburgers oh, the wings the succulent <laughs> wings you know the crispy <laughs> flaky outside oh man it, don't you're making me hungry i'm seeing it now right i'm going into into london hmm. the double down you seen that KFC? Yeah, the there's no breast? bread or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Fucking hell. That's tempting me all the time. But Shit. It's, it's important to try and... Because those little instant gratification temptations, they just build up and build up and build up. You, so, don't, you don't get the same hit from it after a while. It's like tolerance. It's, it's five, five yeah. seconds of mouth pleasure. And, oh, then, and, then, and then a lifetime of regret. Yeah, you know? each bite is like, yeah. ooh, I'm getting all these chemicals and it's feeling really nice. And then you hate yourself after. Oh, yeah. yeah. But that's looking at food as a as a punishment and reward system, yeah. you know? Not and, as like a health vehicle. Yeah, and it's a lot of things, you know, our phones and mm. everything else. And yeah, it, it's, it's about social support systems as well. Like the people in the community that don't have, you know, they, for whatever reason, the family isn't around, they don't have friends to rely on, they don't have a community aspect. It's so easy to put their, you know, love and trust into drugs, alcohol, it's always because there that gives you. it comfort. You yeah, know? and from me, personal experience, it's always there for you. Yeah. Like, your friends might be pricks, but uh, probably not a good word to use, but they just might be idiots. Like, they might be encouraging you to do the wrong things or they might not be there for you when you need to talk. But the weed is always there for me. Yeah. Uh, cigarettes, always there for me. I used to smoke like 30, 40 a day sometimes. Mm. And 
to, all I have to do is go to the shop. Yeah. All I have to do is ring the dealer. All I have to do is get buy another drink. Like that's always there, and it's never going away. And I felt so much security in that. That idea of like the the drugs and everything that you seek in comfort from, it's always there. If you want to binge watch like something, it's there to take your mind off things. Yeah. And this is something I've been debating with some one of my friends recently. Right. We we as uh, motivated and driven individuals, we're like you said, we're looking to take the path to greatness, right? That requires well, not everyone. Definitely not everyone. No. I'm saying for, oh, for yeah, both for of us, you, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. So we know there's certain things I want to abstain from. There's certain things that are definitely not like compatible with the lifestyle I want to live with. Yeah. This path I'm walking. Do you think? There is a balance between I'll have a little bit of KFC. I'll, I'll have a bit of se- well, you got you're in a relationship, but I mean like just a bit of sex, whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, it don't matter, man. Whatever. Just chill out, enjoy yourself, have a hot dog, just shut the yeah. fuck up, enjoy the game, and shit like that. Do you think there's a balance? Like, do you, for you personally, obviously, it's going to be different for everyone. Yeah, definitely, definitely a balance. Mm. And this is one of the things our job is is renowned at being bad for. Mm. It's getting that balance right. You know. Self-love, self-care, sleep is a massive thing. We don't get enough sleep. You know, we we do these 12, 13, 14 hour shifts and the adrenaline rush that you get when on, after the time that you do your shift, it's so hard just to come down and go to sleep straight away. Mm. Sometimes you need an hour or two hours just to relax. And I've made it my mission kind of this year to regain control of that balance. Part of it was doing jujitsu is when I met you. Mm-hmm. Part of it's doing hot yoga. Yeah. Part of it's eating healthier. Part of it's on the sensory deprivation tank. Oh, sick. Where Medi- do you do that? Uh, there's one in Reading. We're going to talk really, about that Yeah, there's, there's a good one in Reading. Um, yeah, meditation, all these different things, self-love, so I can optimize you know, my mind, my body, and my soul to 100%. And the balance was lost before. When I'm in that apprenticeship phase and I'm going through you know, the struggles and I'm using all these different coping mechanisms just to get through. You know, coffee wasn't a big one. Mm. Getting in the morning at like 5 a.m. and just getting five, six coffees throughout the day, you know, just to get through to the end and then having that crash. Mm. So balance is massive, I think, for everyone. And you can always tell when your life is a little bit out of balance. You get anxiety. Yeah. And anxiety is is, is almost like a good thing because it's telling your brain there's something you need to change here. Mm. You're going to kill yourself if you keep going down this Mm. this same road. So... If you listen to your body, you listen to your mind, you can regain that balance. Mm. I wouldn't say I'm 100% balanced. Yeah. Would you say you're 100% balanced? Definitely not. Balanced? No, no, no. We're no. work in progress. Yeah. Constantly. I'm, and I, I think like I'm tipping the seesaw constantly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're going one way massively and then another way mm. the next? I, yeah. I'm, because I'm used, uh, the, the technical term they threw at me was manic depressant right. or depression. I don't know what the fuck. I don't care about the label, but they, yeah, they yeah. said to me like, yeah, you're up, you're down, da, da, da. I'm like, yeah, but it's not just like a random thing. Like, whoa, one day I'm really happy and one day I'm not. It's like, depending on what's going on in my life, how am I feeling about, okay, I'm going to this shitty job. Yeah, no wonder I want to stay in bed all day. Yeah. Okay, I'm now doing what I love. No wonder I don't want to spend all day in bed. Yeah, I yeah. want to clean my surroundings. I want my workspace to be clean. I want to present myself nicely. For, for about two years, bro, I, I was just saying to you now, I didn't talk to anyone. Mm. I didn't do anything. And when I was going through the, the healthcare system, they were like, yeah, this is not healthy. You know, why don't you want to interact? I'm like, bro, it's out of whack. Like in the beginning, the seesaw was up here. I was interacting with anyone and everyone yeah. and di- craving that interaction yeah. of, I don't want to be alone. Now I swing back the other way. And it was like, okay, now I've spent a lot of time with myself. And now the seesaw is, I'm trying to keep it out of balance. But I think, it just depends what you're doing and how that's influencing you. If you're surrounding yourself with a bunch of negativity, like oh, yeah. if it's like, oh, Adam, you know, you need to settle down and get a secure job. How are you going to start a family? Blah, blah, blah. You're like, that's your path, man. Cool. Yeah, yeah. But I think a lot of us get that pressure. And yeah. I do this because it's, it's coming from the outside yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, it's like you got locked into this thing. And before, I've seen it with my own eyes. When mm. you're 40 years old, people like... I didn't sign up for this, bro. Like when I was 16, I didn't think this was going to be my life. And that's one of the main things that pushes me. It's because I've seen it. I've seen the, the versions of myself that I was destined to become if I didn't yes. make different decisions. Yes. And that scares the fuck out of me. Mm. You know when they say motivated by the fear of being average? 
Yeah. I don't like the word fear of being average, but I get definitely get it. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Hmm. yeah it's scary. It's, it's all about perspective as well. It's all about surrounding yourself by positive people. And hmm. I think what you've done, putting yourself in this position of speaking to positive people, and that's going to have a massive influence on how you carry yourself. Yeah, it does. I noticed the first time I walked into jiu-jitsu, like, I was a bit nervous. Well, not the first time, but a few times. Hmm. And I was nervous. I didn't really know anyone. It's quite a daunting thing. Hmm. But you were so open. You were speaking to me. You were like, how are you doing? And then it really showed in your kind of character and your personality what kind of person you were. Hmm. And I really appreciate that. And yeah, it was just amazing, man. That's really weird. I've never, I've never heard anyone like uh, talk about me. It's really weird when I hear people talk about me because I don't ask any ever. Yeah, but it was like when I came into the cafe and you are sat down, you're already chatting to someone <laughs> next to you. I'm like, yeah, this is the kind of guy I want to surround myself, you know? And, and it's all about perspective. It's all about what kind of person do you want to be? Yeah. What kind of human do you want to be? What kind of... You know, you can do all these things, you know, when everyone's looking, but what kind of person are you behind closed doors? What yeah. kind of, and you really displayed that to me today. And I get that perspective massively from seeing some of the elderly patients, you know. We can have a hundred year old man who is chipper, you know, he's had an amazing life, he's still mobile, he's walking around, wow. he cooks his own breakfast every single morning. And then you can have a sixty year old, a seventy year old that has withered over you know, that they've got a host of different diseases and it makes yourself, you know, look deep inside and be like, where do I want to be in 40 mm. years? Where do I want to be in 30 years? Where do I want to be in five years? You know, life is so fragile. Yeah. It can be taken away like that. And yeah. it's such a massive thing for me when I've seen these things and just internalize them. And because I can see all different walks of life, all different personalities, all different families and just move my own way, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, when I think about what kind of 40 year old do I want to be? Yeah. I don't, like, I have two, like, different perspectives. Like, on the one hand, I can't even imagine what I'm going to be doing in yeah. five minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Five weeks from now. But on the other hand, I can definitely see, like, okay, when I am of, of that age bracket, I want to have certain things sorted out. I don't want to be, like, still trying to figure certain things out now and now it's okay because i know like okay i'm in the process of working out if i wasn't on that in that process of trying to figure stuff out yeah. then i'd be shit scared then i'd be like oh when i'm 40 it's gonna be over yeah and people used to tell me oh life's downhill after you finished uni and well when you get a job that's it it's basically over and it's like i don't want to fucking live like that bro mm. it's that's that's like i think that's what causes the hundred year old to be really happy at his age is he'd yeah. done a lot of things that made it a meaningful experience to be yeah. here. If you're 60 and you're already like, yeah, I'm done. And you, mm. you're, you're basically like, you've given up already. You, you might have children, you might have the house and all of this kind of stuff. But what's your, what's your like, how excited are you for every day? That's the stuff that I really yeah. want to make sure that I get right. And you only get that right by doing, starting to do what's right by you. Like, did you, have you, oh, that's a cool dragonfly. Um, have you had that, like, when you were younger, like, were you doing a lot of stuff that you didn't really like to do? And Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. What made you stop? Um, I mean, there wasn't a lot of things that I enjoyed doing. I'd say when I was a teenager, I wasn't a very happy person, mm. you know. Uh, a part of it was separated from my parents, you know, being my own person surrounding myself with awesome people mm. and finding interest as well. I think the internet is a massive thing because it can host so many different value systems and you know so many different passions and beliefs that you never even thought about when you were a teenager. You know, you've got the school system and you've got all these other things and most of it wasn't really appealing to me. Mm. So then I went into I went into YouTube, I went into reading books and started really developing my passion for life and really developing the road I wanted to carve out mm. and what kind of 70 or 80 year old person did I want to be and then but it, you can see it you can see it on people's faces yeah definitely. you can see it in people's the way they approach life the way their body is you know if I go into a house and all the curtains are drawn and everything's dark and everything's you know there's, there's stuff everywhere you know hoarders you can tell that person's depressed because everything like you were saying earlier feels like a pressure and it, you can see it in their body, you know, they're all hunched over mm. and they're not up and outwards. And you see the 60, 70 year olds that are like that. And then you can see the opposite of that, where they're like, oh, hello, darling. You know, <laughs> oh, nice young man's come to see me. And, you know, <laughs> you know, they're, they're lovely people. And, yeah. you know, they really, 
they really brighten up your day. Yeah. You know, they, they're always like, I don't want to be a bother. I didn't really want to call. And everything's bright and they've got family rounds. And it's trying to figure out what, what causes a human being to go down one path and what causes them to go down to the other. And that's a massive part of what I've been trying to do the last few years. Well, are you trying to figure out like what causes people to continue making that decision? Yeah, and I think a lot of it is personal boundaries and a lot of it is living a life by someone else and mm. not being bold enough to say, look, I can't be around you. I can't. Saying, asking yourself the question, you know, how valuable am I? Mm. How valuable is my life? How valuable is my time? Yeah, but he's, you know, I'm getting so excited because this is, this is like, people don't want to look at it like what value am I bringing to this relationship, to this workplace, to this marriage, whatever, friendship, whatever it is. And when, when I say to someone, that's no longer bringing me value, they yes. take it as like, oh, sorry, do I have to be worthy to, to chill with you? And it's not about, I don't look at it like, oh, you're not worthy. I look at it like, bro, I've got a limited amount of time. Yeah. Okay, in each day, in each week, but lifetime, like a limited amount of time. Do I want to expend unnecessary energy on your hating ass? No. Yeah. Like, all you're doing is hating. And it doesn't have to be me. It could be, oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's too, I'm sweating. Oh, the, 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 like, oh, it's yeah. constant, like, negativity. Mm. It sucks the life out of it you. It does. That's why I'm so bullish about get rid of all of that. Yeah. You know, you know uh, it's really after what I said to you, what I'm doing tomorrow. You know, in adult movies, when they sweep the stuff off the desk and they put, yeah, like, I look at like the sweeping off the desk and I'm just about to fuck my dreams. Like, <laughs> I, I never used that analogy before. That's a good analogy, I but, like that. Yeah, like, I, that's what I want to do. I'm yeah, sweep, sweep off all the cobwebs and all the negative friends, all the junk food, everything, mm. and then go after what you want. Yeah. Find that, your truth. Yeah. Find yeah. who you are. Find doesn't matter what your truth is you've got to find it internalize it and anything that's gonna you know damage that or threaten that get it away yeah it has i i look at it like it has to be um that's it there's a story of a stoic uh he had this fabergé egg and um every day he would oh, i don't know i don't know if it's an egg it's some sort of like prized object right yeah and every day he would say it's broken it's broken it's broken and people were like, what the fuck's wrong with you then one day it broke and he was like oh of course and he wasn't upset and it's, I look at that like purpose, right? You have it and it's there and you know that it feels right and it's great to have it. But if it doesn't feel right one day, of course, change it and do, do what feels right that day. Someone said to me, how are you so sure of what you're doing every single day? I'm not. I wake up and I, okay, it feels right for me to do this with you today. Let's do it. Oh, it feels right for me to go jujitsu. Let's do it. Feels right for me to do X, Y. If it didn't feel right, if there comes a point, and this has happened in the past, like I used to make music a lot, and it stopped feeling right mm. because I was doing it because I wanted to get better. That's cool. You know, sharpen your skills and all that. But it was just for the intention of okay, I'm going to get better so I can make a career out of this and da, 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 all of this long shit in the in the future. I wasn't being present, mm. so I stopped. Now when I make music, it's fun because I'm not putting that pressure on myself. I'm not saying, oh, this needs to be right because it's mainstream. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Like it, if you take all of this too seriously, the illusion fucks up what's going on in here. Mm. And I think this is where your real world is. Like I really feel like when you go to sleep, you're recharging yourself, right? But you're visiting another plane that's not here. Yeah. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean it's not any more or less valid than this reality. And yeah, yeah. As you can touch the stuff here and it's like a very convincing illusion. But in order to be able to really stay true to yourself, you need a certain level of either boundary or disconnect. I don't know what the word is. Yeah. Do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. How do you find that balance yourself of like entertaining the illusion world and sticking into the internal so I suppose you could boil it down into two things really can't you you could say like you were saying with your music that's a lot you're looking to the future so a lot of that is anxiety mm. anxiety is when we look mm -hmm. to the future and that clouded your creativity and then looking at the past as well with negative friends and all that and how to stay present and you were saying follow your gut instinct if I'm you know you were saying go to your jujitsu go to things that feel right mm. But, and I think that's very important. I think you have to do that. You know deep down what you need to do. You know deep down you need to eat healthy food. You know deep down you need to get away from these distractions and addictions. And sometimes they creep back in and they you know, take control of you. But as long as you, it's all about confidence really. It's mm. all about 
the confidence and self-value to go after what you want. Mm. It's all about knowing that you're worthy as a human being, that you, you're not a product of all your failures and all the, the bad things that have gone wrong and all the, you know, all the times people have, you know, put you down. You're not a product of that. You're a product of who you are right this moment. Mm. And you can go into any direction you want. Mm, I think that it's a very important thing to be able to let go of, you know, I definitely do this a lot. Maybe not so much today, but in the past, I used to beat myself up. Oh, I'm too young to be doing this thing and who's going to take it seriously and look at all this dumb shit I've done in the past and I still can't get certain things under control. But when I look at like who I was five weeks ago, five months ago, it's like an d- unrecognizable thing. And I think that's what you were saying, like, compare Jordan P. Peterson says, says like compare yourself to who you were yesterday but also like modeling yourself after idols is like a, a good way to get there you, you, you start modeling yourself after Seneca or whoever it is that resonates with you in like 10 weeks you've you suddenly started checking yourself more yeah you, you start oh why am I entertaining this conversation five weeks ago I wouldn't have questioned that yeah and that's the like I think this baby step approach is really good because there's no pressure involved. No. And I, I look at, like, my relationship with cannabis has been rocky as fuck over the last, like, five to ten years, I think, really started to get... Oh, in the last couple of years, it started to get it under control, but for almost ten years, that that bitch ruined, ruled my life. Mm. And I said, oh, Mary Jane's got my back, it's all good. But you, there's a difference between use and abuse. There's also insects flying around. Um, <laughs> Yeah, th- how, d- how do you define the, the line between use and abuse and obviously what you've seen in your work as well? That's a tricky one. No. I think, because I think in our culture especially, it's very glorified with alcohol. Oh yeah, definitely. And this is, you know, I get it all the time where someone's like, oh, drugs are terrible. I would never do drugs. And yet they smoke <laughs> a cigarette, they've got a <laughs> glass of wine and they drink a coffee every day. And I'm like... You're doing these drugs. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. eating five cheeseburgers a day. These are all drugs. These are all things that are instant gratification that are, you know, the reward systems in the brain, the neural pathways are all lighting up. Mm. They're all things that are altering your state of consciousness. So use and abuse, it's very, it's a very fine line. And what society's definitions of abuse and, you know, use are, are very kind of hazy. You know, I think something, I think it's all, we should look at abuse and addiction into, into a health problem, really. Mm. Look at someone with compassion. What's going on in their lives? Have they got a good social circle? Have they got hobbies and passions and interests? Every human being does, you know? Every human being on earth needs needs these basic needs met. And if they don't, it's so easy to fall into these traps. And we pick and choose which addictions are, you know, disgusting and let's put them on the street and let's imprison those people. And what addictions are, you know what? Oh, he's got an alcohol addiction, he needs help. And, we look at all, we need to look at all addiction. Phone addiction. You know, oh, mate. Social media addiction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instagram addiction. Part of the reason why when you walked in, you saw me talking to someone is because I, w- I checked my phone, checked some emails, replied to a few messages, and I put my phone on the table. I was like, right, I'm not touching this, sh- this shit. Yeah. Someone sat next to me. Why don't I just talk to them? Oh, Amazing. how's it yeah. going? Do you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's because I know I'm very prone to phone addiction, man. Because... Mm. Cause, the trick well your business is on your phone exactly but so. you know that I looked at it I kept telling my oh I need to you, I need to upload I don't know. And, and it's like yeah to upload something takes five minutes not even five minutes like five seconds bang put your video on there put a bunch of hashtags there you go I don't need to use it after that mm. oh but let's go on the discovery page oh that's a nice tattoo oh that's nice artwork mm. and slowly five minutes turns into a fucking hour yeah it does that's why I, me now i i know okay yeah a lot of good stuff comes from this but i have to keep it in check and i think it comes to um a point where you you know when you have you ever had that thing where you you find yourself in a moment of complete presence right so yeah if you've just finished using your phone or the common one that i had i can't really say have because i don't do it that much but after i have sex I have this like mad release of chemicals yeah, and then yeah. I'm solely present. Yeah. And I'm experiencing like everything, like touch feels weird. And when I'm in those complete moments of presence, I don't need a hamburger or no, a don't. spliff or a, you know, drink or no. anything. And I want to get there more. But here's the question. Is it an unhealthy pursuit to try and be 
as present as possible. Or like, do you know? What I'm, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we can't all be monks that love life constantly and just sit around doing nothing. You know, I think it's, <laughs> yeah. for myself, I like to have. I do like to buy into the material world. Mm. You know, it, it does serve me a little bit. Not 100%. You know, I still like to look good. I still like to go to jiu-jitsu and mm. all these different things. But I think after you do the high adrenaline stuff or after you do those things, you come back and then be present. It's that balance we were talking about earlier. It's that balance of, yeah, okay, we can go do all this stuff, but we can also be present. You know, I, I think high adrenaline... That's why people love doing bungee jumping, you mm. know, skydiving. forces you into that present moment. Bitch. That forced me into the as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, you're dealing with nature right now. <laughs> you know, all the insects biting you. Yeah. Oh, man. The, I think um, with adrenaline stuff, uh, it, I don't know, man. Before I started jiu-jitsu, for example, I was very, like, I didn't, didn't handle pressure very well. Yeah. And that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to start doing it a lot. A little bit of control. Yeah. And mm. you know, like if you know, when you're getting smushed by someone oh, yeah. who's like really big, <laughs> that's every, every time for me, you <laughs> weigh like 15 kg or so or 20 kg more than me. Mm. When we rolled, I was like, fuck, there's getting get smushed. And like, you're, you're on top of someone. And then when I'm with a, someone who's just beginning, like I feel me doing it to them. Yeah. That kind of like, you're, I'm, I don't like people touching me anyway, but when I go jujitsu, I, I know I'm putting myself in that um, situation of pressure of like, yeah. I don't really want you to have your sweaty like face on my yeah, head yeah. or whatever. Or I don't want you choking me or anything. Like, but I feel like putting yourself in there helps you one, be more present because you're like, well, I have to focus on what I'm doing in this moment. And two, it puts you in a position of discomfort to make you aware, like life's going to try and choke you out. And yeah. if you ain't ready for it, you, be, you there's no tapping out in life. No, there isn't. There, there's no, oh, sorry, Jonathan, I'm done. Oh, hey. Well, there is. Okay, yeah, there that's is. that's true. Yeah. yeah. Do we, are you, okay, so suicide mm. is, is a big one, but I think there's other forms of tapping out which are a lot slower. Yeah. And uh, one of my friends said it the best. She said, when you check out of life, mm. it's like, okay, I've, I've accepted that all of these limitations that I don't really want are going to be my life. Yeah. And that's it I just accepted it yeah I think it's very valuable you know putting yourself into situations that are gonna moving towards the difficult situations you know embracing the suck is what the army say you know <laughs> you've got to embrace the suck in life the Jocko said that right Jocko yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's it and um, you have to you have to do those things because it develops you as a human being you know like you're saying in Jiu Jitsu you, you roll with someone who's you know twice the size of you hmm. you need to keep doing that hmm. keep doing that move towards the pressure yeah you know pressure creates diamonds yeah and yeah, yeah. if you're constantly moving towards comfort you know you're not you're not gonna enjoy the fruits of life so much and mm. i think what you were saying about checking out you know a lot of people do you know physically and emotionally you've got people that are working a job you know and the majority of people aren't happy with their jobs you know going going through the routine the daily routine the grind and something that's not yourself you're working for someone else you know it's a it's a weird kind of life we have that someone it's, yeah someone has this amount of hours per day you know and per week per month per year of your time and you know you do half your life with it so you might as well do something that's you're going to provide value for yourself yeah and, and, and I, checking out and suicide you know it's a real real problem in this country it's a real problem across the world you know and it's it's a horrendous thing to see and, and to... But I can totally understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people say it's selfish and... No. But I, I think we have an epidemic here, you know, and I think a lot of it is to do with how we treat the people that are addicted and how we treat people that, you know, just treat people in general. And this high-powered culture now of, of living in, in... You know, I see in London when I was there, everyone's all after themselves. Hmm. Everyone's you know, let's get this train seat, let's get that, the hustle and bustle, being on a tin can in the subway. And I did it only for four days and I, was, I felt physically stressed. Mm. Whereas I worked on the Isle of Wight and it was gorgeous. <laughs> you know, everyone's friendlier. Yeah. You know, you, you, Isle of Wight is just a, a stunning place. You ever been? I think I've been once, yeah. but when I was very little. Incredible place. Yeah. The sense of community there is amazing. People aren't trying to cut you up. People speak to you. 
but I think it's the difference between cities and, and islands. Definitely, you know? man. But you, you, I, I would be willing to bet, a, if I was a betting man, I would be willing to bet a significant amount of money that the suicide rate in Isle of Wight is at least half or a quarter of what it is in London. That would be an interesting London. statistic, yeah. And I'm not saying just because the amount of people that live there, I'm saying because of the community, because mm. of the way, you know, if you don't say, I've tried to take my life a bunch of times in the past. If I'm not saying hi to anyone, if I'm not like, I remember when I was just completely isolated, but even though I had fake friends around me, like I felt, oh yeah, it's just let me distract. I spent time with them to distract myself from this. Yeah. Cause when I was alone with this, that's yeah. when I was like, let me drink that whole bottle and then we'll just see what happens. Hopefully I won't wake up. Such, that kind of shit. I wouldn't, I, after a certain point in time, I got into a relationship and the only reason I didn't try and do that anymore was because of her. And that's what I noticed. Like I was latching onto something on the outside world to stop me from looking in here. Mm. And that I believe is one of the, it's, I don't know why, it's very common with men. Um, yeah, it is. Maybe it's because we don't talk about our shit mm. that much. And I definitely was big. Uh, that's why I'm so open about everything now. Every, literally, if you watch my channel, anyone who watches my channel knows, like, that's all I want to do. Is, You're living your truth. Yeah, and I, w I don't want to shy away from things like I got a rocky relationship with my parents, with cannabis, with work, with, like, a lot of things. I'm not going to shy away from yeah. it. I will talk about it because if I don't talk about it, I'm only furthering the suffering. You're not owning it. And that, that's a big one, but also other people who are going through it. Mm. Who are they going to be able to relate to? Yeah. If they see someone like yourself or me talking about this kind of stuff, oh, you know what, actually, yeah, someone else knows what I'm going through or someone else has seen it. They've highlighted some things that I may not have even thought about. Yeah. And that's very empowering. But what do you think it is that's stopping us from talking about it? Like, especially when it comes to men. Because men, are supposed to be strong, aren't they? You know, we're conditioned to be the stronger gender. And, you know, if we break down, if we can't handle our shit, what happens to mm. society? And that's, that's the thing that we have in our brain constantly. So, and it's such a taboo subject. It's a taboo subject in the ambulance service, in the military, in the fire service, you know. Actually taking time out for yourself and talking to someone else and you know, putting your feelings on the line. It's a massive thing. Mm. Yeah, so I reckon after us speaking, I think a lot of people are going to have questions for yeah, you. Yeah. Where's the best place for them to contact you? Um, I don't really have a lot going on at the moment with social media, but if you, you know, put it in the comments section, I'll be able to reply to you and, you know, answer any questions that you have. Cool. Um, all the relevant links for me are always in the description and stuff. Um, what did I usually say? Fuck it, I forgot. Anyway, look, yeah, it's been good to speak with you, man. Thanks for you for doing this today. Um, we're definitely going to do more of these in the future. If anyone's got questions for Adam uh, about anything, drop them in the comment section or let me know on all my socials and I'll ask him next time we meet. And uh, thank you for tuning in. You know, you can catch the podcast every Wednesday and Saturday and we'll see you all next week. Peace. Peace.